So we're going to be talking about vector functions here. Now, to get started talking about vector functions, we need to talk about the position vector for a second. This is a position vector. So the position vector tells you where an object is in relation to some origin. So this is an arrow pointing to the point 4i plus 3j, and it tells you that the thing is 4 across and 3 up. But things move. This thing might go from here, and it might sort of go down over here, it might curve up a little bit and move over here, like, maybe not like that. But let's go from there to there. It might move like that. For that, we're not going to, just going to be able to use a position vector. Instead, we're going to have to be able to use a vector function. Objects in motion. Now, this is an example of a vector function. So, what's happening here? 2 minus t, and t is time, uh, times the i component, plus 3 plus t squared, the j component. So, uh, this is a concrete example, but we can just write it as um, the vector with respect to time is equal to some function of time i, some function of time j. And that's what's really happening here. Now, I can create like a table of values here. Something like this, you remember from like year eight and nine maths when you were graphing the near equations or quadratic equations. Uh, at time zero, the x of t, so the i component here, is gonna be two minus zero, uh, which is 2. So 2, i. Okay, um, the y component here, or the j component here, is going to be 3 plus 0 squared, 3 plus 0, which is 3, 3j. Three and that means that r of t, the entire function, is 2i plus 3j. Something like that, 2i, 3j, and there's our first point at time 0. Now at time 1, I can do the same thing. 2 minus 1 is a 1, so that's just 1i. Uh, 3 plus 1 squared is 3 plus 1, so that's 4j. So my next vector at time 1 is i plus 4j. Something like that. Now I can fill all the rest of this in, and this is what I get. So similar to things you did in year 8 and 9, we're plotting points but we're plotting it on using this third variable, time t. So at time t, um, i equals 2 and uh, y equals 3. At time 1, i equals 1 and y equals 4. And we go up and up and up. Now, if I sort of sketch this, I get like a quadratic. It goes right up into the sky, way up there, but it ends up looking a little bit like that. Now, I shouldn't go past there because we don't have a negative time. We start at time zero. I guess we should probably put that in our, in our equation right about there. Actually, I take that back. Let's put time in the real. So we can have negative time. We can go backwards in time. And it probably ends up being like a quadratic that looks something like that. Now, I don't know exactly what sort of quadratic it is, but I can find it. Let's get rid of all this nonsense because we can now convert this vector equation into a Cartesian equation. So, converting this vector equation into a Cartesian equation is actually quite simple. Look at this point here, right? This point here is represented by this, so we can say that x is equal to 2 minus t. Now, that point was where t equals 2, that point was where t equals, um, sorry, 0, that point was t equals 1, that point was t equals 2, 3, and 4. Not that that matters, but x is always equal to 2 minus t. And similarly, y, the height of this thing, is always equal to this bit here, 3 plus t squared. Now, all we need to do is use these equations and solve them simultaneously to sort of get rid of the t. Right? So if we treat this as equation 1 and we treat this as equation 2, the easiest way to do this is to rearrange this, uh, equation 1, to make t the subject. Uh, so we can say that t is equal to 2 minus x, and that's like our new equation 1. And now I can sub-equation 1 into equation 2. And if I do that, I can say that y equals 3 plus 2 minus x squared. 
Now, what that's done is create this equation in terms of just x and y and ignoring that t information. Now, the t information is good stuff, but we've got rid of it just so we're able to now sketch the shape of this thing. Uh, it might be more useful to expand those brackets so we get a, a, this in a different form, ax squared plus bx plus c. All right, so I've just expanded that by doing 2 minus x times 2 minus x and simplified it, and I get x squared minus 4x plus 7. Uh, now, that's useful, right, because uh, I can use that to find turning points, find x-intercepts if it has any. doesn't look like this is going to have any. I might find the turning point real quick, like um, negative b over 2a. Well, it looks like the turning point is equal to negative b, so negative negative 4, 4 over 2a, 2, 2. The turning point's right there, so my sketch is a little bit off. So that's probably more like what our equation looks like. Now we could test that by putting negative 1 in for time and seeing if uh, I get a point that looks like it's about there-ish there. So if I put 2 minus minus 1, I get x equals 3. So, so far that checks out. And if I put negative 1 in here, I get 3 plus negative 1 squared, which is uh, 3 plus 1, which is 4. Yep, it checks out. Okay, so you can see I have a vector function here, and I can use time to sub it to find x and y value. But I can also take that vector function and convert it to a Cartesian equation, and I get something like this. You might be saying to yourself, I have these Cartesian equations, why are we adding vector equations to the mix? Well, two reasons for that. You can see this Cartesian equation has lost information. I know nothing about time here. Whereas here, I know three things. I know the i coordinate or the x coordinate. I know j. I know the uh, y coordinate. But I also know the time. So I've actually got three pieces of information for every single one of them. Here, I've only got two pieces of information, the x and the, and the y coordinate. So a vector equation is very useful. Three pieces of information instead of two. The other reason is that we can push this into three dimensions. So if somebody uh, throws a baseball pitch and it curves through the air and sort of downwards, uh, we can model that using i, j, and k, and we can create a three-dimensional graph of the uh, flight of that baseball. We do not have a neat way to create a function like that in a Cartesian equation. We just don't have it. Uh, so that's another great reason to have a vector function. So another quick example here, I'm not going to try to sketch it, but I am going to try to sort of calculate the domain and range, and I am going to try to convert this to a Cartesian equation so we can sort of find the x and the y coordinates, how they relate to each other. So again, same sort of deal here. The, this is going to be the x coordinate, this is going to be the y coordinate. So we can say that x is equal to 1 minus cos t, and we can say that y is equal to uh, sine so it's not immediately obvious how we're going to do this like simultaneously, uh, but look at equation 1 here, x equals 1 minus cos t. This should sort of remind you of like Pythagorean identity. I'm just going to rearrange that to say that x um, or 1 minus x equals cos t. Alright, so we'll just call that like equation 1 dash. Okay, so that one, yeah, cos t equals 1 minus x. This one here, I'm going to be a bit clever here, and I'm going to multiply both, I'm going to square both sides. So, um, y squared equals sine squared t. Okay, and you should know, uh, we'll call that like 2 dash. You should know that sine squared t is the same as 1 minus cos squared t, Pythagorean identity. So we can say that y squared equals 1 minus cos squared t. And now, we'll just call this also 2 dash. We've just been changing equation 2 here. Now I can sub equation 1 dash into equation 2 dash because that's cos t. This is cos t all squared. So I can just substitute 1 minus x all squared into there. So I'm just going to say sub equation 1 dash into equation 2 dash and we can say that y squared equals 1 minus 1 minus x squared. 
and we can probably tidy that up a little bit, expand some brackets. And we end up with this Cartesian equation here, y squared equals negative x squared plus 2x. Now what does that equation look like? Mm, I'm not really sure. Uh, I could probably like try to figure it out, but that's all I want to do for now. You can type it into your graphics calculator and see what it looks like. Uh, you can type it into GeoGebra and see what it looks like. Uh, but what I can do using my vector equation is actually calculate the domain in the range, the available x values and the available y values. Now, the domain of this equation, the available, the allowable x values, is going to be equal to the range of x of t. The range of this. Why the range of that? Because that's what's spitting out our x values. So only what this can spit out is what our x values in this Cartesian equation are going to be. And uh, 1 minus cos t, well, I know what the graph of 1 minus cos t would look like, right? Uh, it's shifted 1 up and it has an amplitude of 1. So that means that the range, so if, if y equals 1 minus cos t, range um, is between 0 and 2. So the range of that is between 0 and 2, which means that the domain of that, therefore domain, is between 0 and 2. Okay, and then I can do the same here, sine t. So uh, the range of this function is going to be equal to the range of y of t, the range of sine t. And if y equals sine t, we know what sine is, and we know the range of that is uh, just between negative 1 and 1. Negative 1 is less than y, which is less than 1. Which means that the range of this is between uh, negative 1 and 1. Uh, what did that mean for us? Well, I guess it means that we have a Cartesian equation here. The domain is between 0 and 2, 1, 2. The range is between negative 1 and 1. And so, I don't know what y squared equals negative x squared plus 2x is. It's probably some sort of ellipse or circle or something. But I do know that whatever ellipse or circle or whatever it happens to be, I do know that it's going to fit within that box. That is, that its domain is between 0 and 2, and its range is negative 1 to 1. Okay, uh, that is our lengthy-ish introduction to vector functions, and particularly how to convert a vector function into a Cartesian function.